Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, another fight card. Uh, it's the 9th of October. It's going to be in Brazil. It's going to be a UFC Fight Night 29. Um, as I said, from Brazil. And it's headlined by a welterweight clash between um, two dangerous submission guys and Damian Maia and Jake Shields. Uh, coming off probably one of the best fights we've ever seen in the UFC, maybe in MMA. Um, Alexander Gustafsson took John Jones to the limit in, uh, as I say, one of the, the best fights we've ever seen. It was a lot of heart, great determination, some great talent on show as well. UFC 165 was a great card. It was a really good main card as well. Hen and Brow looked uh, unbelievable against Eddie Wineland. I don't know about you guys, but uh, um, I picked John Jones in the fight. Uh, and watching the fight back a few, uh, three or four times, uh, I gave him a decision. Three rounds to two. 48-47, but lots of people giving it for Gustafsson. I can totally see why there's some re very close rounds, especially two and three. Uh, great card, but I'm, I'm really uh, pumped uh, to see John Jones win this fight, um, retain his title and go on to for his uh, Glover Teixeira and probably Alexander Gustafsson again. So, so we're back in Brazil. Uh, always like the Brazil cards. You always get some new people that you've never really seen before. Maybe some of the ones that were on the Ultimate Fighter Brazil as well. So we're going to start all the way down at the, the bottom of the card. With a couple of newbies to the UFC. It's uh, Alan Patrick against um, Garrett Whiteley. Now both guys are undefeated. Don't really know much about them. I've saw a couple of um, Patrick's fights. Um, he's 10-0. Whiteley's 7-0. Um, so a quick prediction this one. I'm going to go... Um, Alan Patrick by submission. Move on to flyweights. It's Eliardi Santos against Chris Carriasso. Big fight for these guys here. Um, both coming off two losses. So the, the loser of this fight is probably going to get the, the pink slip from the UFC. And they'll be on their way um, to other organisations. Uh, Carriasso is a, a WC a UFC vet. He's been around for a long time. Um, I like him in this fight. Eliard de Santos is quite easy. He's a weak kind of wrecking ball. But he just, I just think Carriasso is going to be too slick for him. Um, and he'll get a decision victory. Next up we've got Jan Cabral against David Mitchell. David Mitchell's the kind of can of the, the Willow division if you if if you ask me. I think he won his last fight out. Um, Jan Cabral was on the Ultimate Fighter. Uh, Brazil, he got injured. Um, had to pull out of that um, I think with a broken hand. Um, so he's getting his shot in the UFC now. Um, and I like him in this fight to maybe get a submission late on. Uh, third round submission for Jan Cabral. Uh, next up, Wilter Waits. Uh, Eldemir Alcantara against uh, Igor Harejo. Alcantara, he's won a few fights in the UFC. He's come down uh, the divisions, I think, to a natural kind of weight class. He used to be a heavyweight, and he's down to Wilterweight now. So, um, and I say, coming off a couple of wins, he's um, his younger brother fought Uriah Faber. He'll be back in Boston in, in August as well, so... Uh, Igor Arejo. Arejo was on the Ultimate Fighter, I think it was Team Carwin, um, Team Nelson. And the only reason I remember that is because James Cheney was on it and he's a, a guy that I follow on Twitter and he's a nice guy. Um, this is a tough fight for Arejo. He's getting a shot in the UFC. Uh, I think Alcantara is going to be too big, too strong. I think his boxing is going to be a lot better than Arejo and I think he's going to knock him out. So I'm going to go Alcantara, second round knockout. Uh, featherweight division for the Hakran Diaz against Rodrigo Dam. Uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of Hakran Diaz. Um, very, very kind of solid fighter. He doesn't kind of give much away. Um, I like him in this fight. He, he lost to Nick Lentz last time out by a unanimous decision. Lentz is probably one of the best in the featherweight division as well. Um, he's coming off wins over Alcantara, which I thought was a huge win um, as well. Uh, it's a tough fight to call. I think it's going to be quite close. I think it will go to decision. And I think he will beat um, Rodrigo Dam by unanimous decision. Now we're on the main cards. Um, we've got six fights in here. Some really, really, really good fights. This fight might be fight of the night. Uh, one of the ones to look forward to. It's uh, Rafael Asuncao against TJ Dillashaw. Now TJ Dillashaw out there, Team Alpha Male, he is... Um, on a four fight win streak and he's looking better every time he steps in the octagon. Lost in the final to John Dodson, the ultimate fighter a few years back. Uh, but ever since then, 
we've seen better striking. His submission skills have come to the fore. Um, he looks, he just he's looked really, 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 really good. Um, beat Wael Watson, sub, uh, subbed Von Lee, knocked out Izzy Tamura and knocked out Hugo Viana as well. Um, but he has got his hands full here against Asunsao. Now Asunsao is um, a very, very, very tough fighter. He's coming off wins over Von Lee, Mike Easton, Tamura, Johnny Eduardo. Um, and the last time he lost was UFC 128 to Eric Koch. But this guy is very tough. Um, when it goes to the ground, he's very, very great. He'll try and uh, go for submissions, and he's very, very durable in his feet as well. Um, I've had a hard time picking this fight, but I'm going to go with um, TG Delisho by unanimous dis uh, split decision. I think he'll get he'll get the victory, but he has looked great, and I, th I expect him to get the victory here. But a very, very close fight. Husamar Palhares moving down to the welterweight division. Now we all know he's like a tree stump. He's huge, and he's against Mike Pierce here. One of the guys, um, not big on Mike Pierce. Um, he can I call him the can crusher. I've got a little bit of heat for that before in the past. Um, I think he's coming off about three, four wins in the trot, um, if I remember uh, correctly. Four, four wins in a row. Wins over David Mitchell, Seth Brzezinski, Aaron Simpson, and uh, Carlos Eduardo Hosha. Uh, Paul Harris, we all know about Paul Harris. Um, you go to the ground with this guy, except for Alan Belcher who who took it to him. Um, he's probably going to submit you if he gives you if you give him a leg, he's going to rip it off. He's an absolute beast. Uh, I hope he does that in this fight. Um, Mike Pierce, who, who who has got the one punch knockout power, and if he catches you with that shot, you will go to sleep. He's uh, we should uh, we've seen it in the past. He can do that. Um, but I don't think he will do it in this fight. He's a very good wrestler as well, so Palhares try to take him down. He'll have to work for it. Um, you'll have to maybe look at the cardio of Palhares going into this fight. He is dropping down. He will await for the first time. A big guy. Be interesting to see what he's like at the weigh-ins. Um, I hope Palhares wins, but I'm going to go Mike Pierce by um, third round t uh, TKO. Light, uh, light heavyweight division, Fabio Maldonado against... Um, Joey Beltran, uh, Maldonado is a he's very very good in his feet. He's um he's been in some wars. The the fight with Glover Teixeira, he was getting battered, he was getting mauled, um and then he hurt Teixeira, um in that fight. That I think that was the fight of the night. A way back at UFC 153, um and he was coming. That was three losses in a row after that loss to Teixeira. He lost to Kingsbury, he lost to Pakrayats, but he came back with a win, um at UFC, uh, on. Uh, the Belfort uh, rock hold card in Brazil before uh, and a decision over Roger Hoylett. Uh, Joey Beltran, kind of hard to see why he's still in the UFC. He's lost a lot of fights in the UFC. He's failed drugs tests and stuff. Uh, wins over Hollis Gracie, Tim Haig, Aaron Rosa. Uh, nothing to kind of brag about, but he's got losses in there to Matt Metrio and Pat Barry. Stipe Majosic, Lavar Johnson, James Tahuna. So why is in the UFC? I've no really, I don't have much clue with that at the minute. But I like Fabio Maldonado here to maybe get a late uh, stoppage, or definitely get a decision. Um, I like a decision in this fight, but it could go kind of either way because Beltran is a gamer. Uh, he takes a lot of shots and keeps coming forward. Um, staying in the light heavyweight division, we've got Thiago Silva against Matt Hamill. Uh, anybody that knows me personally, um, and there are probably not many out there, um, I'm rooting for Matt Hamill every time he steps in there, no matter who's against whether it's John Jones, who is one of my favourite fighters. I'm rooting for Matt Hamill because he's just an inspiration um, to the deaf community, which I'm, I'm, I've got close ties to. My fiance um, is profoundly deaf, so I support the deaf community, any athletes or anything coming out of there. Matt Hamill is one of the, the greatest kind of inspirations I think in sports, um, but he's, he's got his hands, um, tough hands full here with um, Thiago Silva, who is just a beast on the, the ground, uh, on the ground, sorry, on the feet, uh, and he showed that last time against uh, Fajal Calvacante, um, big, big light heavyweight, Matt Hamill's um, wrestling is going to have to come in here, the last time Matt Hamill was in the UFC, 
um, was last year, last September, UFC 152 against Roger Hoyler, and he looked, it was a sloppy fight, didn't look great, Ring Ross, he's coming off a retirement, of course, um, but I'm going to pick Matt Hamill here, tough fight, but I'm going to pick Matt Hamill by um, you split decision, be lucky if he gets that in Brazil, but I'm going to go for him. Co-main event, one of the best in the UFC today, Eric Silva, with a, a very, very tough fight here against Dong Young Kim. Kim, uh, we all know, is a judo practitioner. He's, he's tough. He kind of throws like karate kicks and he's starting to get a little bit, get a bit more loose with his stand-up. But a very, very tough grappler. Eric Silva is just a beast everywhere. He's only he's lost to Carlo Preto, which was bullshit. She never lost that fight. Lost to John Fitch, which wasn't a bad loss because it was a great fight. This guy is the sleeper of this division and he can hurt a lot of people and knock people out. He can sub people and I expect him to knock out Don Young Kim in this fight. If not, get an easy decision. So I'm going to go Eric Silva by second round, no, first round knockout. And as I say, the main event of the, uh, the card on the Wednesday, the Wednesday night of the 9th of October is uh, Damian Maya against Jake Shields. Two very, very, very solid jiu-jitsu guys. Not great with the stand up, um, but it's gonna have to. One of them's gonna have to come here and try and be dominant in the stand up to try and win this fight. Because if they go to the ground, they might signal each other out and it might go to decision. But if it goes to the ground, I give a big, big chance for Damian Maya. I don't think Jake Shields can submit Damian Maya, but I definitely think Damian Maya can submit Jake Shields. Jake Shields has even said that the only person he thinks he could ever um, submit him is Damien Maya. Now Damien Maya is a really class guy on Twitter. He's really, really nice. He was asking questions the other day, the day there and he answered a few of mine. Re really great guy. If there was a guy outside the UFC that I really wanted to meet, it would probably be Damien Maya. I could pick his brains about a lot of things, um, jiu-jitsu wise and stuff like that as well. A really nice guy. Jake Shields, he's, I think he's had his opportunity. This is a big fight for him. He might be in his way out after this fight. It hasn't looked great since he went to the UFC. He won belts and strike force, of course. Um, but hasn't looked great. Uh, Damien Meyer looks like a beast at 170, but he's against Jake Shields here, who's kind of struggled to cut down 170. So it's both going to be it's just very very close fight. But um, Damien Meyer's stand up has got a lot better since he lost to Nate Marquardt. Went to shoot a box. Rafael Cordero, Evanderly uh, Silva's helped him out. So he's a lot more fluent on his feet to kind of get the takedowns, the clinch and the takedowns, and. Um, Look very, very good in the welterweight division. And I'm going to go for a submission win for Damien Maya here. I think he's going to catch him late on. Um, he can catch him any round, but I'm going to go with Damien Maya. Third round submission by Kimura. That's a different one. So that, uh, that's uh, my picks for this fight. We'll be back for UFC 166 um, a couple of weeks after. I'll pump out the video for that. Um, the main event, if you like, if you think that Damien Maya is going to win this fight, give me a thumbs up. If you think Jake Shields is going to win this fight, give me a thumbs down. So, um, as I say, that's a really good fight card in the middle of the week in the lead up to UFC 166, which is stacked. Come follow me on Twitter, Big Bilber, uh, Big Bilber 7 mma I always like to speak to new people. Um, so like the video if you if you like Maya to win. Dislike the video if you like Shields to win. Uh, take care, enjoy the fights, and I'll be back for UFC 166 uh, a few days after the event finishes. Thank you.